I want to spend some time talking about neurons with you and I want you to add to your notes the greater details that I'm about to go over um, to build on what we started last lesson. And this will also help you to prepare for our next lesson where we will start to um, work on talking about how they fire action potentials or impulses. So this is a very important lesson to help prepare for that. All right, neurons are very important. We've been talking about the nervous system and neurons along with their companions, the neural glial cells, or glial for short, uh, make up the nervous system. And neurons have a variety of parts, which I know that you're already familiar with, like for instance here, the dendrites, which are in this um, teal or aqua color, the body, which is represented by the purple, or soma, the axon yellow, the axon terminals, and all the way down to the end here where we have uh, what are called the synoptic, synaptic knob at the end of the axon terminal. This green represents something called myelin, and there are cells there that produce it called Schwann cells. And so as you go through and look at the neuron, I want you to make sure that when you look at a picture like this, that you can go through stop the video if you need to, and label all of these various components that I just went over from a picture such as this one. All right, so going on here, so the axon here uh, would be this long skinny part. The soma, again, this large area here. Remember, this neuron is a cell, and so when you look at it, you'll see here the nucleus, You'll see uh, inside of the nucleus a dark dot, which is the nucleolus. You see here uh, endoplasmic reticulum. In fact, this is rough endoplasmic reticulum. You see the Golgi apparatus here. You see various components of cytoskeleton around the edges here giving shape to this cell. Very important. The axon hillock or hillock is this area here. It's the place where the soma begins to narrow down to form the axon. And when action potentials fire, this is the place where it begins and goes down the axon. These are the dendrites here on this end. This blue neuron would be considered the presynaptic neuron. And again here as the axon continues, it branches into axon terminals. And then the area where this neuron, the blue one, looks to be interfacing with this purple structure, this box, that represents the synapse. Neurons don't touch each other, but there is a place where they almost meet. There's a little gap, which is called the synaptic cleft, and in that space is where the neurotransmitters are ejected through exocytosis. And that is where this neuron, the presynaptic, communicates with the postsynaptic neuron. Okay, so this area with the box is the synapse. Um, also, you should realize that in my last picture, the green uh, in my last picture, let me see if I can go back, mm -hmm. represented the cells that produce myelin. Myelin is a white fatty substance that helps axons um, conduct their impulses faster. So make sure that you're able to identify each of those structures. And as we go on through that you add more detail if needed, maybe a sketch in your notes. The neuron that we just looked at is called a multipolar neuron. It happens to be the most common one. There are others that have axons going each direction from the soma. Um, this particular one is the one that you drew already. Okay, many dendrites there. Keep in mind also that the cell, as I mentioned earlier, the cell body or the soma it's just like any other cell body. And it has various structures specific to its function. It has mitochondria. It has specifically um, the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which is going to produce the neurotransmitters, which will then be packaged by the Golgi apparatus and used in the neurons as they fire. Just a few notes about the dendrites. The dendrites are those little projections that bring in the impulse. So there are like little feelers out there 
um, waiting for a message to come from another area of the body, maybe from a sense organ, maybe from another neuron or a gland or a muscle. And they make up a quite a large amount of the surface area of a neuron. A couple of details about axons. Axons, as you know, are a very long section of the neuron. They are the part of the neuron that's going to carry the signal. They may or may not have myelin. Myelin was green on my diagram, and myelin is um, a white fatty-like substance. You can think of it as the insulation on the outside of a wire, the plastic or latex coating on a wire, which basically allows the impulse, the electrical conduction, to travel quicker. And what happens is the spaces between those little Schwann cells or myelin is called a node. Nodes of Ranvier. It's a French word. And those nodes are the spaces between the cells, the green in our picture earlier, which can allow an impulse to jump. So going back to my picture here earlier, I'll show you. So here would be the myelin. And these are the Schwann cells. And each of these spaces here, 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 and here, those are called the nodes of Ranvier. And that would allow, as an impulse begins to travel, it can jump from here to here to here quicker now um, down the axon. So it allows for quicker conductivity. But not everything, not every type of axon is myelinated. So that is a specific need depending on the type of axon. Here's a little picture showing you the details of what I was calling the Schwann cells. And the Schwann cells, remember, each of them holds the axon and forms the myelin around the axon. And here's a picture with everything labeled in the earlier one that we looked at. There are some words that I didn't give you guys um, when I went over it, just to keep it simple. There's more detail in here if you're interested. Let's zoom in now on the actual synapse. You'll notice in this picture, this little area here, they're going to zoom in on that with our next picture, the synapse. So the synapse is the area where the neuron communicates with another neuron. Now remember that at the synapse, these neurons don't touch. They don't touch at all. In fact, there's a space between them, and that space is called the synaptic cleft. Think of a cleft chin when a person has um, a dimple or an indentation in their chin. That is a space, okay? So what happens is the branch from the axon terminal comes in here, also called the telodendrion. You don't need to worry about that term now. But as it branches, it gets skinny. And then at the very end, it forms a little area that widens so that it has more surface area to drop neurotransmitter. And this area is called, this whole area is called the synaptic knob, um, this part right here. And in the synaptic knob, you'll notice, remember, this is part of the cell still. And so what happens is the cytoplasm from the whole rest of the neuron can come down into here. And once the Golgi apparatus, synthesized in the rough ER and packaged at the Golgi apparatus, these neurotransmitters are ready here. And they are what we call synaptic vesicles, so that's the membrane surrounding them, and they are ready. So yellow represents the neurotransmitters. So what happens when this neuron fires, the message will travel electrically down, and at the end it will cause these neurotransmitters to be released. And when they're released, they're going to go and touch this membrane on what we call the presynaptic neuron. And through exocytosis, they're going to be pushed into the space here. And the space, again, is called the synaptic cleft. And what will happen is on the synaptic cleft, there are little receptors. Think of it as a little, uh, a little open bucket waiting for this neurotransmitter. And when the neurotransmitter comes across, it will cause the receptor to grab it, and that will trigger an impulse, another electrical signal to go down into this neuron here, the postsynaptic. So that's the way the synapse works, and the way this neuron, the presynaptic neuron, 
communicates with this neuron, the postsynaptic neuron. Okay, and then what happens is these neurotransmitters are reabsorbed. There are enzymes released that break them down, and those particles get reabsorbed like a sponge into the synaptic knob again. So the cell can remake them and reuse them. So that's how it works in general. So that's the details about the synapse. So keep in mind, the cell right in front, the first neuron we looked at is called the presynaptic. The next one is the, the receiving one is called the postsynaptic, so pre and post. The gap, just to define the terms, the gap is called the synaptic cleft, okay? So remember, neurons don't touch, they communicate chemically. So an electrical message comes down the presynaptic neuron, goes across the cleft in the neurotransmitter, now that's a chemical message, and then triggers another electrical message in the postsynaptic neuron, okay? Remember that synaptic knob is that little part where it starts to spread out at the end? To me, it kind of looks like an elephant foot, and it gives a lot of space for these neurotransmitters to be dropped, which come out of the synaptic vesicles, okay? A couple details about neurotransmitters on the screen here. They're chemical messengers. They will be reabsorbed and reassembled again into future um, use for other neurotransmitter release. And now if you looked at this picture, would you be able to label all of those components? Would you be able to label the um, synaptic knob, the synaptic cleft, the presynaptic, postsynaptic, the synaptic vesicles, the neurotransmitter? Would you know how it is able to transmit by exocytosis. So um, a lot of times when you guys are, whoops, a lot of times when you guys are in class, what I'll have you do is practice that with one another. So as a partner check, would you be able to use all of those terms to describe what is happening at the synapse? You might want to stop and think about that. Maybe even write it out in your notes to give yourself some practice. And if you need a picture, here's another picture that you can use to help describe the one that we already looked at earlier. And the last couple of things I want to do is just talk for a second about um, neurons in more detail. There are three main types of neurons in your body. There are sensory, motor, and interneurons. Okay, and you can read the screen here, but sensory neurons bring in information. So they are part of the afferent division of the nervous system bringing in messages to the brain and spinal cord. The motor neurons send messages out, so they are part of the efferent division, and they are um, both part of the peripheral nervous system. Remember, that's outside of the brain and spinal cord. They bring messages in and out. Now, interneurons. Interneurons are actually in the brain and spinal cord. The prefix inter means between, so this means between neurons, and they connect sensory and motor. So whenever our body has higher order functions, things that we need to think about or plan, um, it's going to require multiple neurons to communicate that message. So a message could come in through a sensory neuron to our brain or spinal cord, be transmitted to an interneuron, and that's where we do the thinking. And then um, an actual effect going out in a motor neuron to make something happen in our bodies. And there again is a synapse for you to think about and practice on. I think I mentioned earlier that neurons to neurons, neurons can synapse with neurons. But there's also um, neuromuscular junctions and neuroglandular junctions. These are synapses where a neuron and a muscle interact but don't touch, or a neuron and a gland interact but don't touch. When we talk about the muscular system and how muscles work, we'll talk about this neuromuscular junction. And we couldn't talk about neurons without talking about their supporters, their entourage, the neuroglial cells. The neuroglial cells make up half of the volume of the nervous system. That's a lot. And they are all around the neurons. So if you look at this picture here,